Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about virtual machines questions and answers. And I believe these questions will surely help you to crack the interview. And also it will give you more troubleshooting understanding for Azure Virtual Machine. So let's get started. Today's video will walk you through 40 real-world scenario-based Azure VM questions and answers, covering everything from basic connectivity issues to advanced disk, extension, and performance troubleshooting. Let's start. First question is, a user cannot RDP into a Windows Azure VM. What's your first step? Answers is, the first step is to check if the network security group NSG attached to the VM or subnet allows RDP traffic on port 3389. Explanation, RDP requires TCP port 3389 to be open on the NSG. Missing this rule is a common reason for connection failure. RDP uses TCP port 3389. If this port is blocked in the NSG rules, no remote connection can be established, even if the VM is running fine. Now, if you want to fix this issue, you have to go to the Azure portal and navigate to Virtual Machines Networking option and look at the NSG rules, which apply to the VM's network interface and make sure there is an inbound rule that allows protocol TCP port 3389 set priority lower than the default deny rule, i.e. 65500. Now question number two. You can ping a VM but can't RDP. What's likely wrong? Answer is, in this case, we may need to check whether the RDP service inside the VM is running or not. It may be stopped or the port may be blocked by a local firewall. So we can check and disable local firewall or add rule in local firewall as well. Ping uses ICMP while RDP uses TCP 3389. So we need to enable it. Now question number three. You created a VM, but it's stuck in creating state. What should you do? Answers is. So for this issue, you can check the deployment status in the activity log or resource group events. Answer. VM is stuck in the creating a state. It means the deployment process is hung. Also, you need to verify that your subscription has enough quota for vCPU. Also, you can check invalid image or failed extension. Errors like quota exceeded, authorization failed, or resource deployment failure are key indicators. Now, next question is, how do you reset the password for a VM if you lose access? You can use the reset password option under VM. Explanation. Whenever you want to reset password Azure, always use the VM agent to reset credentials without needing direct access. Now, next question. A VM is failing to boot and shows OS disk read error. What's your action? Answers is create a rescue VM, attach the OS disk of the failed VM and investigate corrupt system files. Explanation. Rescue VM allows you to recovery of data and manual repair using CHKDSK or DISM SFC tools. Now next question. What if the public IP address is missing from a VM? Answers is associate a public IP to the VM's NIC via the network interface settings. Explanation. Public IPs are optional and need to be explicitly assigned if needed or else you can access from VPN. Now next question. A how we can troubleshoot boot failure for Azure VM? Answer is, you can use the boot diagnostics feature to troubleshoot boot failures for both custom and platform images. Explanation, boot diagnostics helps capture console output and screenshots during the boot process. It can be configured to store data in a user-defined storage account or in a Microsoft managed storage account. Now next question, what's the difference between deallocated and stopped state? Answers is, Deallocated VMs release compute and IP resources, while stopped from inside OS still incurs charges. Explanation, only deallocated VMs stop billing for compute usage. Now next question, VM agent is not responding. What could be the issue? Answers is, the agent service inside the VM may have crashed or failed to update. Explanation, you can check for Windows as your guest agent logs, or reinstall via recovery if needed, or else you can remove some PowerShell script to reinstall agent. Now next question. 
What does it mean if a VM has a provisioning state failed? Answers is the VM creation or update failed. So you can check the resource manager or extension logs for more details. Explanation in Azure, when a virtual machine has a provisioning state of failed, it indicates that an error occurred during the creation, update or deployment process, either with the VM itself or one of its associated resources, such as network interfaces, disks or extensions. As a potential fix, you can try adding a temporary tag to the VM and then removing it. This action has been known to resolve provisioning state issues in some cases. If the issue persists, consider using the redeploy option available in the VM overview blade. Now next question. A Windows VM is not applying group policy. What could be the cause? Answers is, the VM might not be joined to the domain properly or the domain controller is unreachable. Explanation. Runge result to verify also check domain connectivity via NSLOOKUP. Now next question. Your VM is unreachable but shows running in the portal. What can you try? Answers is, you can use serial console or run command to investigate inside the OS. Also, you can check boot diagnostic to check whether it's stuck at boot loader, login screen or BSOD. Explanation. These tools help when remote access RDP SSH fails. Now next question. VM backup fails with snapshot errors. Why? Answers is the OS or data disk may be encrypted without appropriate backup extension support. Explanation. Please ensure backup supports encrypted disks and VM is properly registered with Recovery Services Vault. Now next question. A user complains of slow VM performance. What should you check? Answers is, you can review metrics for CPU, disk and memory usage via Azure Monitor from Azure Portal to understand performance issue. Explanation, Azure provides built-in monitoring for performance bottlenecks. Now next question, the VM is not reachable and the boot diagnostics show a kernel panic. What's your next step? Answers is, in this case you need to mount the OS disk to another VM inspect the syslog or dmsg logs. Explanation. Kernel panic requires manual inspection or OS repair tools. Now next question. A VM extension install fails repeatedly. What's your approach? Answers is, if it's Linux VM then check review var log vargent dot log. And if it's Windows then check C colon backslash Windows Azure backslash logs backslash wa appagent dot log dot. Explanation. These logs capture extension install scripts and errors with all details. Now next question. How do you test connectivity from one VM to another across VNet? Answers is, you can use testnet connection, ping or telnet from PowerShell SSH and check NSG, UDR and firewall from portal. Explanation. Communication issues often stem from NSG or route table misconfigurations. Now next question. Your Linux VM shows file system is read-only. How to fix it? Answers is, run fsck on the disk after booting via a rescue VM. Explanation, this is usually caused by corruption that remounts disk in read-only mode. Now next question, a VM using ephemeral OS disk reboots and loses config. Why? Answers is, ephemeral OS disks are not persisted on deallocate restart. Explanation, ephemeral OS disk is a temporary disk used to store the operating system. It's stored locally on the VM host, not on Azure Managed Storage. Ephemeral OS disk is recreated every time the VM is reprovisioned. Now next question, why is a static IP on a VM NIC suddenly changed? Answers is, static IP set from inside the OS was overridden by Azure DHCP. Explanation, IPs must be set via Azure portal or ARM templates, not from inside OS. Now next question, how to find VM IP addresses programmatically? Answers is, use GetEdge network interface with PowerShell or Azure CLI as network NIC show. Explanation, these commands reveal IP configs tied to the VM NIC. Now next question, how to move a VM to another subnet or VNet? 
answers is you must recreate the VM or use Azure Resource Mover or Backup Restore strategy. Explanation Azure does not support changing the VNet of an existing NIC directly. You must recreate the VM with a new NIC attached to the target VNet. You can only move within subnets of the same VNet. If it's another VNet, you must recreate the VM. Now next question. You see high disk queue length on a VM. What does it indicate? Answers is the VM disk is experiencing I.O. bottlenecks. Explanation. You can consider switching to a higher tier disk, for example, from standard to premium SSD disk. Now next question. A VM with accelerated networking is showing dropped packets. What could be wrong? Answers is drivers for SRIOV may be outdated. Explanation. Update the NIC driver to support accelerated networking correctly. Now next question. A VM in a load balancer backend pool isn't receiving traffic. What to check? Answers is you can verify health probe configuration, NSG, backend port, and VM availability. Explanation Misconfigured health probe is a common culprit, so you can check on backend VMs. You use Netstat Ano Vertical Bar Finster 80. Now, next question How to recover a deleted VM? Answers is if soft delete is not enabled, recovery isn't possible. Otherwise, recover from backup or snapshot. Explanation Azure doesn't offer native VM undelete unless backup exists. Now, next question After enabling just in time, Jeet, Axis, you can't RDP. Why? Answers is Jeet requires explicit approval of Axis via Security Center. Explanation until it's get approved, NSG rules block inbound access. Now next question. VM can't join an Azure AD DS domain. What might be wrong? Answers is check DNS server configuration points to Azure AD DS IPs. Explanation. AD DS requires DNS to point to managed domain IPs. So you can do not look up to verify domain connectivity. Now next question. VM consistently reboots randomly. Where do you look? Answers is use boot diagnostics logs and OS logs event viewer for root coils. Explanation. This could be due to patching, kernel panic or automation. Now next question. How do you automate VM extension removal? Answers is use PowerShell remove as from extension or CLI. Explanation. This command is helpful in reconfiguring or redeploying the extension for the VMs. Now next question. Disk size is increased, but the OS doesn't detect the extra space. Why? Answers is, you need to log in as your VM and need to expand the partition manually from the OS disk management. Explanation. As your increases the disk, but OS won't auto expand on OS level. Now next question. You get quota exceeded when creating a new VM. Solution. Answers is, if you have appropriate access, the you can increase the quota on subscription level for region or else you can submit a support request to increase core quota in that region. Explanation As your enforces core limits per region. Now next question. You're unable to stop a VM stuck in stopping state. Solution Answers is Use PowerShell stop as at VM force or escalate to Microsoft support. Explanation when an Azure VM is stuck in the stopping, deallocating, or stopping state, it means the stop operation was initiated but could not be completed. This can occur due to platform issues during deallocation or extension issues preventing shutdown or Azure control plane, not receiving acknowledgement from the guest OS or guest OS stuck during shutdown or dependency issues like ongoing backup or Windows update. Now next question. A VM in availability set cannot be resized. Why? Answers is the requested size is not available in all fault update domains. Explanation Azure availability sets are backed by dedicated fault and update domains distributed across a physical hardware cluster. When you try to resize a VM in an availability set, Azure must find available capacity for the new VM size on the same cluster. And in the same availability set, 
to maintain high availability. Now next question. What is the impact of not having a VM agent installed? Answers is, you cannot reset passwords, install extensions, or use diagnostics. Explanation, the Azure VM agent is a crucial component for managing and interacting with Azure virtual machines. It's responsible for enabling many core Azure platform features. Not having it installed will significantly limit your ability to manage VM operation. Now next question. Disk latency is high even with premium SSD. Why? Answers is, the selected VM size may not support the required disk throughput. Check the IOPS and throughput limits for your VM SKU. Explanation, review the maximum IOPS and throughput supported by your current VM size. If the application generates more I.O. than the disk can handle, requests are queued, leading to increased latency. Consider upgrading the VM SKU or enabling disk bursting if available. Now next question. How to migrate a VM from one region to another? Answers is, use Azure Site Recovery, ASR, or Snapshot plus Copy plus Redeploy method. Explanation, Azure regions are isolated locations and resources in one region cannot be directly moved to another. Therefore, migrating a virtual machine involves recreating its components, such as the OS disk, data disks, NIC, and virtual network in the target region. When planning a migration, it is important to consider the potential downtime or aim for minimal downtime depending on your requirements. You can use common methods to migrate a VM across regions include Azure Site Recovery, recommended for minimal downtime. Manual migration, using disk snapshots or VHD export and import. Now next question. The run command feature fails to execute. What could be wrong? Answers is, the VM agent may be missing or not communicating. Explanation. Run command relies on the VM agent being active and functional. Now next question. You need to migrate managed disks from one subscription to another. How? Answers is, use snapshot export to storage account and re-import in the target subscription. Explanation. Managed disks can't move directly. Use storage blob as intermediary. Now next question. After adding a new NIC to a VM, the OS doesn't detect it. What could be wrong? Answers is, the VM may require a reboot to recognize the new NIC or the OS may need updated drivers. Explanation, Azure adds the NIC, but the OS might not initialize it until reboot or driver refresh. For Linux, check IPA. For Windows, check Device Manager. A customer reports that their application on the VM is intermittently inaccessible. What Azureative tool can you use to diagnose this? Answers is, Use Connection Troubleshoot in Network Watcher to test end-to-end -end connectivity. Explanation. This tool checks connectivity between source and destination VMs or IPs, including NSG, UDR, and route configurations. It helps pinpoint where the connection is breaking. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. We will be creating more similar videos on Azure Load Balancer Azure Application Gateway and other Azure resources.